a lot of you, uh, you know, a lot of you in the audience uh, don't know what it was like 10 years ago uh, when Tom and Dick were at the Purple Onion and I was at the Hungry Eye. America was a lot different then. The only thing that's been consistent and has continued has been Richard Nixon. Uh, <laughs> and he certainly is persistent. Anyway, uh, eventually if you lose often enough, you can win. And uh, that's the message tonight. At any rate, uh, a lot of the younger people in the audience have stopped me on the street and they've said, we're certainly behind him, but who is he? Um, that, kind of, that kind of rationalization is, um, I suppose you could draw a very graphic analogy. When a man is elected and you say you've got to like him, that's the same as uh, discovering you're pregnant and then trying to fall in love as rapidly as you can. <laughs> that's wrong. Okay. Now, Richard, thank you. You notice I'm moving to my right as we work in the round. The, uh, your left is my right, and that's what makes this country what it's rapidly becoming. Now, the, uh, uh, so, uh, oh, one other thing the president has inherited, and that's J. Edgar Hoover, who is now entering his 45th year of federal service, and he's given his, his life literally to his country, and uh, the closest Hoover came to ever losing the job, he was appointed, some of you younger people really flip out at this, he was appointed in 1924 uh, by what I consider to be a far-sighted president who knew that crime would rise. And uh, <laughs> it's risen every year in direct proportion to the budget of the FBI. They don't seem to ever get, you know, it's like... <laughs> That's right. So, Hoover... The closest he came to losing his job is when Gene McCarthy said he would fire him, which was a capricious uh, grab for power in this country, trying to woo the criminal vote. And he said, Are there any groups we haven't offended? 